Imagine you're a criminal who has large amounts of illegally obtained cash they need to move around the world. You can't go to a bank with suitcases full of cash. The last thing you want as a criminal is people asking questions about where all this money has come from. So instead you use underground banking. In one of my last videos, you may have heard me mention underground banking. In this video, I'm going to explore the concept of underground banking and how criminals in China exploit these covert financial systems. Underground banking, a clandestine network of financial activities, operates outside the reach of traditional banking systems. Criminals utilize this shadow economy to facilitate their illegal operations, launder money and evade authorities. These covert networks provide a parallel financial system, offering anonymity, flexibility and limited oversight. In 2019, the National Crime Agency published a report entitled Chinese Underground Banking and Daigo, which highlights the threats posed by Chinese underground banking and Daigo in transferring money across jurisdictions. Chinese citizens are tightly regulated by the Chinese government, and when it comes to moving money out of China, each citizen is limited to the equivalent of 50,000 US dollars per year. All transactions must be carried out through a foreign exchange account opened with a Chinese bank. Due to these strict regulations, the use of underground banking activities has grown significantly. Criminals capitalize on this system to facilitate their illegal operations within and beyond China's borders. Criminals who seek to operate in underground banking often utilize traditional Hawala networks, which leverage trust, reputation and personal connections. Hawala provides an alternative money transfer system, enabling individuals and criminal organizations to move funds discreetly across borders with minimal documentation, making it challenging for authorities to track and monitor transactions. To understand how Hawala works, imagine an individual. The remitter seeks to send money to another person in a different location. The remitter approaches the local Hawala, providing them with the funds they wish to transfer. The Hawalada then contacts a counterpart or associate, often located in the recipient's area. They negotiate an equivalent amount of funds to be delivered to the intended recipient. Instead of physically moving money across borders, Hawaladas rely on offset arrangements. This means that they accumulate debts and credits with each other over time. Settlements for these balances occur through various means, such as cash, trade transactions and other financial instruments. Hawala networks have a wide geographical coverage, spanning multiple countries and regions. They often rely on family, ethnic and religious ties to establish connections and expand their reach. This networked structure allows for the swift movement of funds across borders. Another method of underground banking which has gained significant popularity in China is Daigo. The term Daigo means buying on behalf of, refers to the practice where individuals in China purchase products overseas on behalf of others. To understand Daigo, we need to delve into the origins. The practice emerged in the early 2000s when Chinese consumers sought a way to access foreign goods that were either unavailable or expensive in the domestic market. The rise of e-commerce platforms and the growth of China's middle class further fueled the popularity of Daigo. Underground banking networks leverage Daigo channels to transfer funds. Instead of directly remitting money, individuals looking to move capital out of China can use Daigo agents as brokers. These agents purchase products overseas on behalf of clients, and the funds for these purchases are transferred to the agents through unofficial channels, bypassing the formal banking system. The interwining of Daigo and underground banking poses several challenges and risks. Firstly, it increases the complexity of tracking and regulating illicit financial flows. The use of Daigo channels makes it challenging for authorities to distinguish between legitimate commercial transactions and those intended for underground banking purposes. Another concern lies in the lack of transparency and accountability within the Daigo economy. As underground banking transactions occur outside of the formal financial system, it becomes difficult to monitor and ensure compliance with anti-money laundering and counter-terrorism financing regulations. Chinese criminals utilize underground banking to launder vast sums of money acquired through various illicit activities such as corruption, fraud, drug trafficking and illegal gambling. They leverage the complex networks of underground banking channels to obscure the origin and trail of illicit funds. The Chinese government have implemented several measures to combat underground banking and illicit financial activities. However, the fight against underground banking remains an ongoing challenge. Criminal networks continuously adapt their strategies, requiring constant vigilance and development of new techniques to combat illicit financial activities effectively. The Chinese government continued to evolve its approach to stay ahead of emerging threats in the underground banking sector. This brings us to the end of the video. As always, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing and liking this video. It really does help me out. Till next time. 
take care.